Hey Ubi Chefs, welcome to this week's Cook Along. 10 dishes on the way for you now. I'm going to go through the bread and starters, mains, desserts and cheese. Show you how I put them together. A few tips from the top. Really, really simple as always. There's no cooking uh, to do, no like chopping, prepping. It's all ready to go. So you can enjoy your time with your family, with your guests, etc. This is carrying on, of course. So don't forget to have a look at the website. Lots of menus coming up. Um, we've got four menus always ahead. We've got more sort of things coming onto the website. We've got some barbecue stuff coming on there as well. Really, really interesting. Not going to say too much more at the moment. But for now, let's get cooking this week's menu. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get started then now. I've really, really been looking forward to this one. This is our weekly bake, so every, every week it might be crackers, it might be a sourdough. This week it is back to sourdough, and this is our Bramley apple sourdough. There you go. So this is made by us in-house. What you want to do this first of all is get this in the oven. Uh, it's got lovely bits of Bramley apple going through, which is sort of semi-dried out, so a little bit chewy. Um, lovely and sour, of course, from, uh, from the dough. So this is going to go in the oven about 12 to 14 minutes. So let's get that in. And then, what we're serving with it. Get your little light pork scratchings, empty it out onto your tray, get all of them out there. And then what we're gonna do, we've got a whipped cider butter, would you believe? So let's put that onto our little crackling and then just roll that butter around. It's worth pointing out as well, but I've had this butter out just warming up. So, you want that, and that will basically help you get the crackle on there. Can you hear it crackling away? like Rice Krispies in the morning. So, get more on your hands and then really kind of roll that in. And then, there we go. So, that's all done, wipe your hands off, clean the board down a little bit. There we go. Now, of course, the crackling has a little bit of saltiness to it. I'm just gonna add a touch more, a tiny bit of mold and salt on the top, like so. I'm just going to wait for my bread to come out, so my butter is softening up, bread's going to come out, we're going to slice it with a serrated knife, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Let's grab my brownie apple sourdough out. Oh, it's smelling delicious. Wash the tray, it's really, really hot. You see my butter, of course, has been sat there warming up all the time. And then your bread, you want a nice serrated knife. Obviously, be careful when you're using a serrated knife, much easier to cut yourself, but much easier to slice the bread nicely. So, just take off some nice slices and serve it so you look at that see how it you've got a beautiful straight away those bits of brownie apple going through the dough so we're just going to continue to slice that through so there we go and then let's form that bread back together let's get it nice and ready to present onto our plate. Then just that cider butter by the side, and that is it. What a nice way to start the meal. Brownie apple sourdough with a whipped cider butter, just coated in those lovely pork scratchings. First start of you um, is a fillet of gilhead bream. So what we've got here, you can see we've got the fillet of bream, which has all been prepped, it's been torched on the top, that gives it a lovely, like, smoky flavour. On the top as well is a little clarified butter with garlic and parsley, a touch of lemon in there as well. This is gonna go in the oven for about six minutes. So, in that goes. Then unpack your box with your rye bread. So again, this is our own house rye bread. It smells all lovely and treacly, really, really nice. We've just char grilled it for you. That's gonna go in the oven for about two to three minutes. You can serve room temperature if you prefer, but I like it nice and hot. So that will go in when the bream's, just before the bream comes out. And then my garnishes, we've got salsa verde, so parsley, uh, we've got mustard in there, red wine vinegar, and then we've got a little radish salad. So nice radishes, all sliced really, really thinly. A little bit of lemon dressing. You see, just take the little cotton pad, cotton pad off of a radish, of course. We keep that on just to keep it nice and fresh during transit. So I'm gonna wait for my bream to come out, and I'm gonna show you how to put this really, really simple, but stunning flavor bream starter together. Time to plate our bream up. Let's get it out of the oven. So you can smell that, look at that in there. See that lovely little butter in there with that lemon and the garlic in, all melted on the top. Really, really nice. Let's bring our rye bread out, which again, smells beautiful. What we want to do first of all then is take some of your dressing, this is our little lemon dressing, and get some onto your radishes. Tiny bit of seasoning in there, again. So there we go, let's just 
get the radishes nicely dressed. Then what we'll do, take your bream and just get it onto your plate. Don't place it too kind of like sort of regimented. It's got to be look, look natural. So I'm just going to have to get that last piece out there like so. Tiny bit of that butter on the top. Smells coming off of it now of that, that garlic and parsley, just absolutely lovely. Then let's get some of our salsa verde next. Little spoons. Remember, as you eat this, you want to get pockets of flavor every sort of single mouthful. So just small pieces, the small, sorry, spoons of that salsa verde. There we go. Then our radishes, what I'm going to do is just you know, really play with the colour on here and where we've sort of done them into a little ice water view, they've just curled lovely and you can just get a bit of height on the dish. It's all about making the most of the, each ingredient you put on so you don't have to put lots of ingredients on, just make the most from the certain ones which are on there. So a few more radishes, I think you'll agree that's starting to look really beautiful. There we go. Then what I'm gonna do, quick clean down. Let's get my little rye bread. I'm just gonna sit that just on the back of a plate like so. A touch more of our dressing, just over the top of the bream. And there we go, that's it. Really full flavor dish, perfect for this spring. Look at that, lovely. Fillet of bream, garlic, parsley, lemon, rye bread, radishes, salsa bread. This is my terrine of guinea fowl here. So in here, confit of guinea fowl, poached guinea fowl breast, we've got artichokes, we've got a little savoy cabbage going through there, we've got cannellini beans, it's wrapped in serrano ham. Basically, it's really, really tasty. Take a knife, and you can do this before or once you put it onto the plate and just cut that clean film. Just peel the clean film off, make sure that's all off. Let's get rid of that. And then a little spoon. Take some of your truffle dressing and just spread out all over the top. Remember this week, for example, you know, we've got, as I said, we cater for all diets. We've got some no truffle this week, so we've sent a completely different dressing. So again, don't be put off if you see a dish and you've got a dietary requirement, let us know, we'll take care of it. A little bit of salt onto the terrine, and then let it sit out 15 minutes. It's got to warm up so you can taste all those flavors in there. Meanwhile, take our brioche out. So it's a lovely homemade brioche loaf in baked bean cans. So then on your tray, under the grill, and be careful because it will color very, very quickly. The rest of the garnishes, let's explain quickly. I've got this bit of crispy chicken skin here. So just break that ready to garnish on your plate. And then we've got this lovely Arjun prune, prune uh, puree here. Really, really rich, lovely and dark. We need a little palette knife or spoon to spread that on top of the brioche and of course our truffle dressing. So keep an eye on your brioche. Take your fish slice. It's got a little paper on the top, I'm sorry, on the bottom just to make it lift off nice and easy. So just take it off of there. And let's have our plate turned round and let's get our terrine placed. Use that pan off just to make sure that both sides are all nice and straight up. Your brioche, look, that's already colouring. Now, out we come, onto the other side, back under. And what we'll do, give your prune puree a little stir, just to make sure it's all nice and smooth. See, see that lovely, silky smooth prune puree. Then we're gonna get some of our skin. I'm gonna start putting a few pieces, just resting up against that terrine. Nice and simple. A little bit on there, a little bit around. A tiny bit of my truffle dressing. Give it a good stir to make sure it's fully emulsified. And then a little bit of that on the plate. Back to our 
grill onto your board, watch the tray, it'll be hot. Then get your prune puree. And this is, I like to do this, I had this dish up on the uh, Eiffel Tower by Alain Ducasse, and that's, he spread the brioche with, with the prune puree, so that's where the idea came from. Anyway, just give it a little spread. And like dome over, so in the center, you've got a lovely thick layer of prune. Go into the sides where it's a little bit thinner. Turn that brioche around. Just like so. There we go. Tiny few flecks of salt. Just where that, that sweet prune is on there. Let's just place that on the side and look at that. Nothing else needed. A beautiful pressing of guinea fowl crispy chicken skin, toasted warm brioche, that's really, really important. Make sure it goes instantly to the table with that prune puree on. Honestly, lovely starter. My vegetarian starter for you uh, this week is asparagus terrine. Now, I know we've been done this quite a few times before, but we keep bringing it back just because it's so popular, really, really fresh. And of course, the other white asparagus now is absolutely fantastic. So in here, you've got a terrine of the asparagus, lightly set in its own jelly. So we make a stock from the asparagus and set it in there. So that's our terrine. Make sure that is out for at least 15 minutes before you eat it. That will warm up, the jelly will kind of like slightly relax a little bit so it won't be as firm. Then we've got this lovely little duck egg just here. So take your duck egg out. This has just been poached. Um, then it's been coated in a little panko breadcrumbs, four to five minutes in the oven. If you want your egg a little bit more cooked, put it in for an extra three, four minutes. So the rest of the garnishes, we've got these lovely little asparagus shavings here, these have just been kind of peeled off. They're gonna get dressed with a little bit of our hazelnut and lemon thyme dressing. And make sure you do this ahead of time. Good, like, you know, five, 10 minutes, because that dressing, add a little bit of seasoning to that as well. And then give it a mix. And what the dressing will do, is start to wilt down your asparagus. So we still want the crunch to it, but of course we want that dressing to kind of nicely uh, get inside the asparagus and just slightly soften it down. So that's my asparagus all dressed. I've got my whipped hazelnut mayonnaise all ready to go. So I'm going to wait for my egg to come out uh, and then I'm going to show you finishing this dish off. There's my egg out there. We're all ready to plate the asparagus up. So I'm just going to take it off that tray. Careful the tray, of course. So we'll just let that sit just for a second. Asparagus terrine. Lift it out. Carefully from the little tub it arrives in. Now what we want to do first of all, tip from the top, is get a little bit of your dressing, just sort of like the oil part of it, and then use the back of a spoon or your finger or a little brush just to rub some of that dressing into that asparagus on the top, and then you get that beautiful shine. Tiny bit of seasoning. There we go. And I use molten salt, that lovely little flaky bits of salt just on the top. Then take a fish slice, nice and wide, ideally. Let's get that little bit of paper. And what we're gonna do is place it just on to your plate. Give it a little nudge, a little tidy. And then either with your fingers or a little pair of scissors, little tweezers, just pull the clean film. Of course, we leave this on just till it rise to you all nice and straight edged, etc. So, just take a little bit of the jelly off the side. Then, what I'm gonna do, take my egg. You don't have to do this, but take a little serrated knife and take the slice in there. Slice again. And then let's just expose that Beautiful runny yolk in the center. Give my knife a quick rinse. And then what you're needing to do then is a little bit of salt just in the center of the egg. To place our egg on the dish. Right, then a little piece that you sliced out, you can place that as well. I like to just kind of add that just at the bottom. Just turn it over, looking lovely. Then your mayonnaise. So carefully slice open the end of a bag and then pipe that 
mayonnaise. So this is a hazelnut mayonnaise. I'm just piping on there like so. Now I want to get a bit of my dressing. So this is thyme hazelnut. So any nut allergies, obviously be careful of that. It's worth pointing out, any allergies of you, Chef, if you let us know in advance, we'll send you a different dressing. We won't just kind of say, no, that's what you've got to have. So always remember that. So, then finally, what I'm gonna do, take some of my lovely little asparagus shavings. Just place them, look at that. This is uh, where it makes it more like restauranty. This is what we were doing in a restaurant. So we send you all tooled up and equipped to produce this in your own home. So a few more little spears, just one more. I don't want to overdo it. And that's it. So that is my Torino asparagus, whipped hazelnut mayonnaise, that crispy poached egg, and a little dressing of hazelnuts and lemon thyme on the top. Fish main course now. This is lemon sole cooked on the bone. So here you've got your lemon sole. This has just been coloured off, it's seasoned. Just needs a little bit of mold and salt when we serve it. I recommend cooking it on the bone because then that's going to keep the fish nice and juicy, ready for you to serve it. So that's going to go in the oven about 12 to 14 minutes. So in that goes. And then garnishes this week, what we're serving with it, these lovely little crab croquettes. So fresh white crab meat, we've got coriander in there, lime juice, lime zest, potato, in a little breadcrumb. They're gonna only have about six to eight, no more. It's all cooked. A um, little bit of crab beast there. So this is a crab beast made from the bones of the crab. Cream, touch of tomato in there, a little bit of uh, tomato, uh, local tomatoes, just to really rich in that up. That's just gonna go on the heat, just before we're ready to serve it. Then, we made a crab like shellfish oil. So this is made from the bones of the crab, roasted off and infused with oil overnight. So you get this lovely orange, beautiful, fragrant oil. Then we've got sea herbs. So I picked these down on uh, Ventnor Cliffs this morning. So this is rock samphire grass. Again, very, very similar to marsh samphire grass, but not salty. And there's little sea beet leaves in there as well. So this is sea spinach touch of herb butter, simple as that. That's gonna go in, make sure you leave the foil on top. That's just gonna present, uh, sort of prevent it drying out. That's gonna go in four, to four or so minutes in the oven to heat up. So we'll come back and I'll show you how to put my lemon sole dish together. Let's get our lemon sole plated up now. Nice warm plate ready to go. Shellfish oil all on the side. And then my piece, I've just got that on the heat now. I've got a whisk in there. You, uh, you don't wanna boil it. Let's see as you whisk it. Chef just agitates it. It starts, starts getting nice and frothy. Always add a little bit of milk if you, if you like, just to get that really, really frothy, like almost cappuccino. So that's ready to go. Remember, most important, don't boil it. There you go. Sauce is all good to go. Right, let's get our soul out. Lemon sole, lovely delicate flavour on there. That's our sea herbs, and of course our crab croquettes. Again, a little bit of seasoning on your fish and your crab croquettes. The reason we don't add that before it goes because the salt can, of course, start to draw the moisture out. Then what we're going to do take a little bit of the sea vegetables. So that's our sea beet. And of course our lovely rock sandfire grass. Let's get that on the plate. Nice little bed in which to sit our fish. Let's go in there with your fish slice. And then you've got a beautiful lemon sole onto your bed of sea vegetables. Then next, let's Take our little croquettes of crab. Be careful with, it, with them, of course, because they're quite delicate. It's just that beautiful white crab meat in there. Very, very lightly bound with some potato, the lime, a bit of coriander. So let's get all of those around. Finally, a few more sea herbs, just for the eye. Let's place those around. Make it look nice and, nice and natural, again, not too placed. 
I'm just using a sand fire here because that, that CB is all underneath already. So a few more just to finish that off. There we go. So quick clean. Our crab bisque. Just lightly on. As soon as you spoon that on you can smell it, it's just so fresh. Go. A little bit of a little bit of that crab beast. Then the thing I like to do this oil, shellfish oil, take that around and you see how that just splits out the sauce. A little like an oil slick, but this is a beautiful oil slick. So there we go. Lovely pockets of that shellfish oil. And that's it. Dish you out back on many a restaurant in the past. Lovely bit of lemon sole cooked on the bone, most important. Crab croquettes, sea herbs, and that beautiful crab beast. Main course here for you, this is wood pigeon. Haven't done wood pigeon met that often in UB Chef so far, but this week we managed to find quite a few of them. So, wood pigeon's just here. This has been cooked, it's got some duck liver just in the center. It's wrapped in serrano ham. And in the bag here, you'll see it's got the thyme, a little bit of fat that's been cooked with. So, most important here, what you do, snip it open carefully. And then put everything, including all of what's in the bag, thyme, a little bit of fat, all into your dish. Then that is gonna go into the oven about 12 to 14 minutes. If you want the pigeon a bit more cooked, see a little bit longer, so in it goes. Next up, what we're serving with it, so we've got this lovely vegetable balancing. So this has got some spring cabbage in there, it's got carrots, a little bit of potato. What you wanna do with that is just take your pair of scissors and just carefully cut the outer film layer off and again we just send this like this just so it stays all together for you then what I like to do is tiny bit of oil just on the top and also a little bit of water in there you could use stock but just a touch of water because that's going to pre prevent it drying out in the oven so there you go like that that's going to go in the oven about six to eight minutes so I'll keep that there and then we've got these lovely little uh, dumplings here this is a little wild mushroom dumpling We've set a little bit of chicken stock just in the bottom as a touch of butter. So as this kind of cooks, the stock is going to be further absorbed by the dumpling. So that's going to sit there. Final garnishes. This is my consomme of pigeon. So you see there, lovely, beautiful, clarified pigeon consomme. What we're going to do about is just onto the heat, we're just going to warm it up and then straight up to the plate. You don't want to cook, uh, cook this for too long, sorry. Otherwise the flavors will start to kind of, it'll, it'll get like bitter. Um, so just into your pan, carefully just slice off that corner and literally just heat this up just as it's about ready. And you see again, yeah, we make all of our stocks, all of our sauces, lovely clarity on that one. So I'm just gonna sit out on the side of the stove, all ready to go. I've got a few pea shoots, keep it nice and fresh at me on top of my pigeon. So I'll be back shortly. I'll show you how to put this lovely pigeon main course together. Okay, just ready to plate my pigeon now. So, hot plate ready to go. Got some pea shoots in there ready to garnish the top, and my consomme is warming up. Bring our pigeon out first of all, we want to let that rest. Ideally, it's on two to four minutes. Let's get our cabbage balancing out there. So you see, pigeon's cooked, my balancing's ready, it's got all those lovely carrots, potato going through, and my consomme is just warming up on the stove. You don't want it too hot. I'm gonna serve my consomme in a little jug, so I can take it to the table. I'll just show you how we serve that. So to plate this one up, all you want to do is get your cabbage balancing, turn it over, and that goes right onto your plate like so. Then your little dumplings, now drain them off because remember with consomme we don't want to put any kind of like excess unclear, unclarified liquid into it. So just try to kind of drain those off as you place them. There we go. And you've just been cooking that in that nice little chicken, chicken stock. And what we'll do, let's take our pigeon out onto the board. Let's take that bit of time off now, which it's been cooking with. 
just there for to flavour it even more as it's cooking. And then let's get our consomme. That's just come up to scolding point. You can smell it here, still lovely and fragrant. Really, really important not to over overheat that. So your pigeon. So you can slice it a couple of ways. You can slice it straight through the middle, or you can go around this, this way, completely up to you. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of the edge off, just to sort of help me sit it on my cabbage, and I'm gonna carefully, like, like nice long, sweeping kind of strokes of a knife. And there we go, look at that, lovely. Tiniest bit of salt on here. Remember that Serrano ham, it's got a salt in it, so you don't need too much. Let's get that, let's sit that on top. Let's get our consomme. So this is what I'd do, I'd pour it into a nice jug, take that to the table. I'll of course show you pouring it on here. And then I'm gonna get some pea shoots, a tiny little bit of oil on there, a little bit of seasoning. I like to add these because of course, you know, this is grown in the fields and the birds will come along, especially the pigeons, and they'll peck away at that. So a little bit out on the top. I don't want to cover, cover up the, the center of the pigeon there. So I'm just gonna place just a few on there. And then I'm gonna put just another token little pieces on my lovely little mushroom dumplings. Right, almost ready to get my consomme on. There we go, sit that on there. Then take it to the table, get your consomme, do the chef thing, pour that, look at that clarity on that, brilliant. Pour that all in. And there you go. That's my pigeon main course for you, Chef, this week. Little duck liver in the centre, lovely little balantina vegetables, those mushroom dumplings, and that super clear, super flavoursome consomme. Hope you enjoy it. Vegetarian main course this week. This is a nasturtion pappardelle. So in here you can see this bright green pasta. Beautiful, touch of butter, touch of nutmeg. Uh, we've made a nasturtion puree, put it through the pasta dough. That's there. And we've got, this is a little blast from the past. This is, uh, we used to do these in a restaurant, radish carpaccios. There might be a few chefs that worked uh, for me who remember this, who kind of um, might weep uh, from this dish. So we've got the radish carpaccio. It's backed with a little bit of white radish on there, mouli underneath. So we've got that one. First of all, we're gonna get our tomatoes, olive white tomatoes and a little olive granola. The granola's got a touch of honey going through there. It's got some dried calamata olives and some rolled oats just in the oven. Three minutes, that's all it's gonna take. Then I've got my saute pan just here, just warming up. We've got our radish cream, which I'm just gonna get into my pan. This is a white radish cream, again, made with that mouli. You don't want to heat this for too long. It's just warm, so I'm just gonna put that just on the edge. Now get your pan. This is all ready for the pasta. Into there, you want about two tablespoons of water per portion of pasta. So let's get that in. Put a little more in there. And then your pasta, in it goes, just like that. Back over to the heat. And you just want a little pasta fork or a little pair of tongs like this. And you just wanna agitate it and that water, as it heats up, it will turn to a lovely emulsion with the butter, coat the pasta, and just give it a little toss over. Let's get my radish cream on, start heating. And now I'm gonna show you the carpaccio. So my plate, and the grill heating up. I've got some little nasturtion leaves just here, plate the dish. Cut your little pouch, take out your carpaccio, and there you go. So you've got two sides. You can see clearly the radishes are on one side and then the mouli's on the other. Peel off the side, which has got the mouli backed onto it, okay? So that can sit quite happily now. Then we'll go back to our pasta. Just kind of like toss that over. You'll see all that stock will start to break the pasta down slightly. Then plate out, ready to go. Our radish cream, that's all hot now, that can sit on there, 
lovely smell coming off of that. We've got slight bitterness from the radish, of course, on there. And then we've got the pepperiness from the sturgeon, going through the pasta, and of course those lovely sweet Isle of White tomatoes. So, just continue to toss that over, like so, and then bring that over. Pasta, give a little season to. Again, quick toss, and just, you can almost arrange that just in a bowl. So then when we come to service, I'm just gonna just pour this out onto my plate, nice and easy. Tomatoes, check, they're almost done. Let's get plating. So, radish cream in the center. Use your spoon to just spread that out. Got a nice like, thick rim around the outside. So our pasta is all gonna sit in the center. So that is all good. Grab out our tomatoes and the granola. There we go. Smell those olives really giving off a lovely scent now. Then our pasta. Let's just get that right into the center of our papadel. Just use your little fork just to keep it all central. There we go. Then I'm going to get my tomatoes. So here, we've got some yellow ones in there. We've got some of the little tiger tomatoes. So just arrange this all around your plate. Like so. And then what we're going to do, we're going to get our lovely radish capaccio. And that's just going to sit in prime position just on the top. So there we go. A few more tomatoes. Like so. Then your granola. So just a little sprinkle of that granola over it. A little bit around the plate as well. There we go. Then I'm gonna get my capaccio. You see, just take it nice and carefully, sit it on the top, just peel it off. If you see any radishes start to stick to the paper, just Give them a little helping hand. Look at that, lovely and delicate. All that's left, just because obviously, of course, it's an nasturtium pasta, we want some of the actual leaves. Just to show your guests, like, in leaf if they've not seen one before. Let's get all those out. I'm not gonna cover up the actual, the actual capaccio though, because I don't want to color up those beautiful colours. So there you go, that's my capaccio done. Tiny bit of lovely cold pressed rapeseed oil on the top. I think you agree. It's a beautiful vegetarian main course uh, The Sturgeon Papadel who always really really lovely garnishes. Hope you enjoy this one. I'm looking, looking forward to diving in. This is a dark and stormy dessert now. Um, this was a really popular pre-dessert back in the restaurant. So we've turned it into a dessert for you this week. You've got your caramel tart here. So this has got muscovado sugar going through it. But also this has got rum in there as well. So this has been baked. Let this come up to room temperature at least 15 minutes. I know I say it a lot, but let it come up to room temperature. It's gonna taste even better. Then we've got rum and raisin puree just here. Cut the end off of there. Just so that's all ready to plate. And then in here, we've got a creme diplomat. So it's a lovely light cream. And what that's, got, what that's got in there is ginger beer. So ginger beer in there. And then we've got our little meringue. So I'm just gonna get my cream all ready to go. And a little tidy down. Then let's ready to plate. So let's get a palette knife. And let's put my lovely little caramel tart just on there. Then let's get my Diplomat cream. You can see it's lovely and soft, but just to uh, hike that onto your plate, like so. And don't be too, again, don't be too placed where, as you plate it on. And then there's my rum raisin puree. Just 
And then finally, let's get our lime meringue. I'm just gonna stand a few little shards up, a few around the side. This has just got some lime zest going through it, so it's just wonderful and like, aromatic, just to kind of like offset that rich tart. And there we go. That's my dark and stormy dessert, baked caramel tart, rum raisin puree, and that ginger beer diplomat cream. Next dessert for you, we've got this really nice shoe bun here. So nice big shoe bun. It's got this lovely little glaze just on the top of it. Lovely little like uh, caramelized sugar on the top. What I want you to do this is put it in the oven for a couple of minutes. Just first of all, it's just gonna kind of re-crisping it up. It's obviously in transit can sometimes go a little bit softer. But before you put the mousse into it, make sure it's cold again before you put the mousse in. So what I'm gonna show you here are the garnishes. So we've got some strawberries, really, really nice strawberries back in season now, English strawberries. They've just been very, very lightly poached with some stock syrup poured over the top. And then we've got this little jus de fraise here, or a little strawberry soup. Really, really fragrant. In here, we've just infused this with a mouthy lemon, and then we've held it up in a muslin and let it drain out. So really, really lovely chilled soup to pour on the top. We've got white chocolate aero here. Really, really nice Valrona white chocolate. And then in here, we've got our white chocolate mousse. So just take your little knife, just give that a little cut, just so you're all ready to pipe it when, when it comes out. And then let's gather our shoe bun out. Get it onto your board. Obviously, I so said make sure it goes cold. Really, really important. I'm just gonna speed things up a bit here. Take your serrated knife and make sure you put your hand like on top of it like nicely. Don't kind of hold it like that because you're going to your fingers. And then just carefully slice the top right the way through. Okay? And that's where just putting it into the oven can just help because it re crispens it and it makes it nice and easy to slice. So, then what you're left with, of course, is that lovely shoe bun. Look at that, really nice and crispy on the outside. So let's pull that to the side. Let's get our chocolate mousse. Let's fill that right the way up. Don't be shy. There we go. And then let's quite quickly now, let's get our strawberries. Let's get them into the into the bowl and what you want to do is make a nice base on which to sit your Valrona chocolate shoe bun so let's get the rest of them in like so then let's get our lid let's just place that back on the top let's sit that on there and let's get a bit of our chocolate arrow you can just cut it, make sure you keep the arrow in the freezer as well. And you get, see there, it's lovely and crunchy. I'm just gonna put a few pieces of my arrow all the way around. And the rest will go back in the freeze for when I'm hungry and fancy a little, little bit of lovely chocolate. And all you do, take it to the table, and then pour your Beautiful jus de fraise in there like so and really get quite a lot in there. And look at that. Really, really nice dessert. Lovely and fresh, making the most of those stunning English strawberries back in season. Lovely little shoe bun, white chocolate mousse in the side, our own chocolate, the aero, the poached strawberries, and the strawberry soup. Cheese course now. This is an Isle of White soft cheese. So this is for two people this week, or you might be having it for one. That's what I've got anyway. So I'm just gonna show you inside what we've got. So here we've got Richard Hodgson's Isle of White cheese. This is the Isle of White soft in the center. We've just sort of like cut it very, very lightly. We've got some thyme, rosemary, flaked almonds on the top, a touch of pink pear, pink peppercorn, sorry. So keep the paper all folded up. Now, very important if you've got a nut allergy, this does have nuts in it, of course, as Yubi Chef always does, we make alternatives. So, that cheese is gonna go in the oven about 18 to 22 minutes, let's get that in. When it comes out, make sure you let it sit just for a couple of minutes, two, four minutes ideally, because then it's just gonna calm down. If you go in straight away with your crackers, it's gonna be molten in the center and you risk it just all flooding out all over the place. So, I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna serve with the cheese, lovely stout crackers here. 
touch of mold and salt on the top. And then we've got a nettle pesto. So the brave Uber Chef soles have been out foraging nettles this week with some very thick gloves on. Again, this has got flaked almonds in, so be very careful. If there's any nut allergies, they can't have this one. Back in about 20, 22 minutes to show you how to put this lovely baked almond white cheese together. A last course for you now coming up. Let's get my cheese out of the oven. When it comes out, as I said, make sure you let it rest for a good few minutes. Either take it out of the tray, keep it in that paper though, because it will just help it. Just relax a little bit so it won't all come flying out when you serve it. Let's get some of our nettle pesto. Remember, this has got nuts in. So unless you've let us know, which of course will have sent you an alternative. But remember, no nuts. Uh, no, uh, sorry, nut allergies can have this one. So let's top all that pesto in there, like so. And then let's get our stout crackers. And I'm gonna get my fork and just kind of stand them all up. This is a little sharing dish, of course, so you want plenty of crackers on there. Uh, let's get all those locked into my fork. A few more, a lot of cheese to eat there. And then let's, let me just show you just in here. So carefully peel back that paper. Look at that. You can just see in there. Look at that, that lovely melted Isle of Wight soft cheese from Ridge Hodgson. Absolutely beautiful. And that's how I'm going to serve it. Lovely and rustic like that, but great finesse, I think, with that uh, pesto and those crackers just to dip in. So that's my that's my cheese course. Um, really hope you enjoyed this week's menu. Remember, next week's menu is live now. You can order until this Sunday. So have a look at the website now. Lovely menu again next week. Have a great meal and have a great week.